Okay guys, here's a question that's been bugging me for quite a long time. How much savings do you get in terms of aero savings by tidying up the cables on your bike? Have you ever had a good look at the cable runs on your bike? I mean, it's very unlikely that you've got one of those super hyper bikes that we've been reviewing in the last few videos. You know, the kind of bikes where the cable runs are totally integrated. But they're integrated for a reason. They're not integrated in order to make life difficult. They're integrated because the designers of these bikes have realized that there are aero savings to be made from these concealed cable runs. So my question is, in more precise terms, how much of a saving do we get from integrating these cables? Basically, how much faster do you go? How many watts do you save from integrating these cable runs? Now, potentially, this is something you can do even with your regular bike, because although it's a pain, you can reroute the cables. The most obvious first step is rerouting it under the bar tape. Okay, probably 80, 90% of people already do that, but you can also buy one of many, many types of bars these days which allow through bar cable runs. However, really the ultimate step is integrating the cable runs through not just the bar, but the stem and then the frame. Now, the reason that's slightly tricky is if you think about it, if you have to work on those cables, you may have to pull the entire cable run out from beginning to end. But in fact, most of the modern bikes have got split versions of the headset spaces so that you can actually work on it mechanically fairly easy. Okay, now one bike that's really intriguing regarding the cable runs is the Cervelo S5, the new S5 2019 model. Now this has gone through three generations, generation one, generation two from about five years ago, and generation three. Now actually, arguably the step from generation one to two was the biggest jump, but visually, sure, the new S5 version 3 looks spectacular. It's got this exterior steering system which you used to find pretty much exclusively on TT and triathlon bikes, which is really interesting. And it's also got that split stem, which was first seen on Simplon Pride, but it's basically a copy here. Speaking of copies, probably licensed to be honest, they're using the RAT or RAT through axle system which has been pioneered by Focus Bikes and seen on the Focus is Alco Max. And that works beautifully well, but you do end up with a clunky lever, which is rather oversized. I'll show you in a future video how to reduce that to a really aero profile on the RAT system. A little spoiler there is from Robert Axel, Robert Axel Company. Now there's some other nice features of this bike. It's got that curved, seat tube which hugs the rear wheel it's got that wide flared forks which actually probably is more aero but in addition to that it leaves room for larger tires possibly 32 millimeter maybe even more on this bike but returning to the question at hand it's got quite a complicated system at the front end whereby they've engineered that integrated cable run now the reason that i'm highlighting this particular bike today is that Cervelo have taken this bike extensively to the wind tunnel and all the results are out there in a white paper that you can download. I'll try and put the link below in the description. Now the headline as a whole is that the aero savings of the entire bike are actually quite modest compared to the 2014 S5, i.e. version 2. The savings are around 5 to 6 watts or 42 grams of drag, they calculate. It's a much higher saving compared to version 1. Version 1 to 2 saved about 28 watts, I believe. But here comes the clever bit, guys. They actually played around with various stem, bar and cable combinations in the wind tunnel. So they, for example, took the 2019 model and replaced the Super Aero stem, so-called CS28, and the Aero bars, AB08 with the standard stem from like a previous model and the standard aero bars but standard like you know two-piece bars the AB04 and then they compared it with cables exposed and with cables concealed. Now with that standard stem and AB04 I think their cable run is already pretty short 
So we shouldn't anticipate spectacular savings in this regard. You know, the cable run, the exposed cable run, because obviously the drag on the cable run is gonna be a function of the length of that cable run, right? But even with this short cable run, they showed roughly 13 grams of drag was purely due to the cable routing, i.e. one quarter of the entire savings going from version two to version three, as you can see in this chart here. Now actually, probably most other superbank manufacturers have done the same thing, but they haven't necessarily published the data. But another bike company that has is actually Trek with the Trek Madone. And the Trek Madone 9 has been into the wind tunnel. And sure enough, they did pretty much the same thing. Now here's the interesting thing. They said, going to the fully integrated aero bar, the very latest one, 2019 Trek model, saved 34 grams, over the already aero bar combination of the Bontrager XXX aero bar. But more than that, the cable runs, tidying up the cable runs themselves, were worth even more than changing the bar. Tidying up the cable runs was worth about 37 grams of drag compared to 34 grams of drag for the bar. Now it's pretty awkward dealing with grams of drag. So let's put this in the little calculator provided here online by Cycling Power Lab. Now we can examine here just what 37 grams of drag is worth. So at 30 kilometers an hour it's worth about 3 watts, at 40 kilometers an hour it's worth about 4 watts, and yeah at 50 kilometers an hour it's worth about 5 watts. So those are fairly substantial savings. To give you an idea if we compare that to my old wind tunnel aero gains ranking, where I ranked 1 to 35 aero savings, then 5.5 watts would be the same as having a fully exposed bottle on the frame, as opposed to no bottle or putting it completely behind you in your back pocket. It would also be slightly more of a saving than have your jersey open rather than tucked in. And about twice as much as putting stickers or tape over your helmet vents. Okay, there's one more manufacturer that has looked at this and that is Specialized. Of course, they just released their 2019 Venge, haven't they? A massive improvement over the Venge VIS 2015 model. Both models actually have concealed cables. The 2015 was one of the first bikes to come to market with concealed cables. So maybe no surprise, Specialized have taken this quite seriously. And they've just looked at this topic by coincidence in the wind tunnel series. And here we go. In the wind tunnel series, they've taken a bike. It's the Specialized Roubaix. And they've done something quite clever. They've just put it in the wind tunnel like ready to go with four cables, brake cables and gear cables. And then they've used exactly the same bike, both times by the way, without the rider, and stripped the cables off. Obviously not rideable, but the key point is they've done a like for like comparison, Roubaix with cables, Roubaix without cables. Okay, it's not an aero superbike, but it's still a very interesting comparison. And their results, cutting to the chase, is that at 45 kilometers per hour, they had the wind tunnel operating at 45 kph. They're estimating a saving of about 12 seconds over 40 kilometers. So we can crack this code using one of the algorithms that we've got at Fast Fitness Tips where we look at air pressure, rolling resistance, CDA, you know, all the, all the parameters that would enable us to predict the watts required to go at that speed. So very quickly, what we want to know is how many watt savings do we get from a 12 second saving over a 40 kilometer event? So we already know our baseline condition is 45 kph over 40 kilometers. That would mean that our time is around 53 minutes 20 seconds. Saving 12 seconds would take us to 53 minutes 8 seconds and the speed would have to increase from 45.0 kph to 45.169 kph. And it turns out the watt saving is 2.4 watts guys. So specialized in the wind tunnel test have shown that stripping out the Roubaix cables saves you about 2.4 watts. 
That's assuming their model is correct without the rider. And I don't really doubt that it is correct. I think it is pretty much a ballpark figure, maybe a little bit conservative. Again, look at the figures, look at the images for the length of the cable runs, the complexity, compare that to yours. Now, what I find amazing about all this stuff is how can a little cable at the front of your bike, which surely perturbs the wind only a small amount, looking at the surface area of that cable, how can it add up to somewhere between 2.4 and let's say high end estimate 5.5 watts which actually is half of the difference between one of the new superbikes fully integrated and their older non-integrated models in other words half of the saving that you're getting roughly a third to half of the saving is coming from integration alone so how can we have such a large benefit of such a small change? Well, the answer to that appears to be in the nature of a cylinder flapping about slightly in the wind. If you look at this amazing image from Tom Anholt, he's compared the size of the optimum foil that you would have to have in order to have equal drag in the wind tunnel compared to a simple cylinder, i.e. A bike cable and if you look at the difference in size it's actually astonishing so when you realize that that is the difference okay head on zero your into the wind yeah and then yes it does start to ring true the magnitude of the effect you get from fully concealing or, or tidying up your cables is really quite significant more than we've ever realized in the past and as a final word of thanks i want to give a shout out to matt parsons who left a comment on my top 12 ultimate road bike shootout just a few days ago and he said that he remembers that in the cycling weekly two-part head-to-head aero shootout that the scott foil was almost identical to the venge vis fully integrated so he wonders whether the full integration is the explanation for that whole saving well it turns out if you look at the rankings of their bikes across those two-part tests then the fully integrated Venge VIS, the old version, 2015, and the Trek Madon, the old one, albeit the high end, fully integrated by the way, were at the top of the pile. But the Scott Foil, you're right, the old one was the one non-integrated bike that did quite well. So that tells you that it's not just the integration that's saving watts. There's something about the design. You know, you can save five watts in the bike design or the wheels but it's an easy save it's low hanging fruit now to also conceal those cables which is why i think going forward from here we're going to see a whole heap of bikes with concealed cables and when we see cables dangling out the front in years to come we're going to go oh you know that is a old design <laughs> that is a 2000s design you know that is a 1990s design it's going to be a real red flag for old bicycle design okay guys that's enough from me on concealed cables as ever thanks for watching give me a like or share if you can check out our patreon site and as always stay safe out there until next time this is coach alex from fast fitness tips have a great ride but this time with your cables concealed right <laughs>